all my dealings with him have been great. They haven't helped me play him very much, but they, they've been great. The computer system post office spent an arm and a leg on is faulty. No one else has ever reported any problems with Horizon. No one. You're responsible for the loss. I haven't got that money, and I don't know where it's gone. It's an incredible untold story of uh, injustice and, uh, and a miscarriage of justice. And it was a story I was aware of, but I wasn't, um, I didn't know all the details. And so when I read the script, I was immediately struck with just how important this story was to tell and how compelling and, and tragic and awful and horrifying and, and important it was that we told this story and we got this incredible ordeal out to the general public. Um, I mean, I'm a director that looks for, I love doing true stories and factual dramas, um, but you look for something um, unusual in each choice, and this was something truly remarkable. I got a phone call um, from James Strong, the director, saying he was making this and he wanted me to play one of the parts in it, which was a real person, um, which is different for me. I don't think I've ever played a real person before. Um, and the story of the post office scandal, I'd only heard bits about it. Um, and so I went and looked into it, um, couldn't believe what I'd found, but also didn't even scratch the surface to once I started playing the character and understanding what he'd been through um, and what these people had been through and what the post office had put, put them through. This script revealed to me, you know, the appalling everyday cost of what happened to these people. The fact that I, I had misunderstood what had gone on was as much a driving force as just the honour to play the character of Alan Bates. Really. When I was given the opportunity to be part of this amazing project, I jumped at the chance because this is such an important story in the history of, of British justice and uh, and it's a story of David and Goliath of ordinary people taking on the might of a huge institution so everything ticks all the boxes for everything that I love about a good drama and something that has something to say about the world. When I first came across this story I didn't believe it. Um, actually like all the best true stories it is actually unbelievable to think that something as awful as widespread as, as, as destructive as this could happen in Britain you know in our country we, we're just not accustomed to thinking of um, our country being as oppressive as this. Um, and for people to be um, accused of, of crimes they didn't commit, sent to prison, had their life savings taken off them, all for nothing, and be told constantly, you're the only one this is happening to, and I thought I was just completely outrageous and unbelievable. So when I was asked to, uh, to talk to all the sub-postmasters and turn their accounts into a drama, well, I mean, I bit their hands off. <laughs> The casting of this series was a big challenge because, first of all, there's a lot of parts, and we wanted to have amazing people in as many in all of the roles. So, you know, the budget was a challenge, um, but we had to sort of aim as high as we could. And I really wanted to create an ensemble that was brilliant actors, but also those actors that who really inhabit the roles that they kind of take on. And you know, it began with Toby Jones to play Alan Bates. He was just perfect as this. Um, every man who fights back in this David and Goliath story. Um, but we wanted to surround him with an ensemble that was um, kind of real. Realism was a big kind of consideration for me that I really wanted these people to feel like you're watching the actual people. These deficits were most likely caused by you. That is the post office case. All our hopes, all our savings down the pan. That was a lie, actually. Alan is a quite extraordinary man who presents as one of the most ordinary people you can meet. And indeed, that's true of a lot of the sub-postmasters. So then when you come to play someone like that, I needed to find out who he was, what made him do this extraordinary thing of unite hundreds and of, of th you know, a thousand people in one place and take on the might of the corporate post office. And that was a great shock because he was quite clear that although he was, you know, totally up for the, the drama because it drew attention to the, the struggle, he felt that he himself wasn't worthy of being heroic because there was nothing unusual about him. He wasn't a great source of material. I mean, he was very friendly and warm and said, I, you know, the thing is, I don't 
I'm not a very emotional guy. Uh, so I then went to chat to other people who knew him and they said that Alan Bates is one of the smartest and inspirational people they'd ever met. There's a paradox about him. All my dealings with him have been great. They haven't helped me play him very much, but they, they've been great. Luckily, I got to meet Joe. Um, you don't always get to meet the real people you're playing, but I met Joe at the read-through, and actually, as soon as I walked in the door for the read-through, I saw her, we saw each other, and um, uh, we got quite tearful, actually. I asked Joe after a few email exchanges and a few chats if she wouldn't mind recording um, her life story for me up to the point where the script starts. So she very kindly did me an audio recording of her life story and that was extremely useful because it meant I had records of her experiences but also I had her voice so I could listen to that going to the set in the car in the mornings so I could listen to her voice and then that would put me put me in the right place certain performances you do with different characters um, you, you, the way you play them this one you had to just be very real and make sure the emotion came through and make sure it's believable and honest and, and that's all I wanted to do show his journey through what he went through um, and tell his truth um, and hopefully that's come through in what I did for Lee. Um, I met him today and it was quite emotional meeting him because I'd, 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 I'd played him and I know what he's been through and I've read his story. So I just gave him a hug and I was like, mate, I understand what you've been through. But I can't feel what you've been through. I play Suzanne Serkin in the series, who is um, Alan Bates' partner. I was very lucky to be able to go and visit Alan and Suzanne at their home in North Wales just before we started filming. It's been a really, really wonderful experience for me. Suzanne is very much behind the scenes in the, the wider campaign. There's not very much about her in the news or in any archives. Um, she's very much, I think, the wind beneath uh, Alan's wings, but she is incredibly active and supportive in the campaign. She would take the minutes for the meetings for the Justice for Sub Pulse Masters campaign and uh, she would draw them. She's a really talented artist, so she would draw these elaborate diagrams showing where people sit and where they are. And she'd also do sketches during the court cases. So she has a very unique perspective of the whole history of the campaign. So I played Simon Korafal, who's um, a British Punjabi Sikh woman from Birmingham, who runs a post office, ran a post office in Birmingham with her husband. And I was lucky enough to meet the real life couple and. Um, and talk to them about a little bit about what they went through. Um, I guess I got the character generally from the script and just from my initial reactions to, to that and connecting to the story, but also from meeting her and kind of getting a sense of who she is and and kind of the Britishness of her, and which is in the story, but like the Birmingham identity and, and how it all just merges together. I think it just kind of through some sort of process of osmosis <laughs> made sense. I play Paula Venels, who was the um, CEO of the post office. Her remit was to turn the post office around into a multi-million pound business. The contradiction in her character is that she's also um, an Anglican priest, uh, which I found kind of fascinating. I suppose in many ways people could portray her as the villain uh, of the piece, but in order to play a character, you kind of have to find the humanity in the character. Um, and villains, in my head, um, don't know that they're villains. They don't think that they're villains. And they find justification for all of their actions. And, um, and to have faith as well kind of protected her in a, in a way. I play Angela van den Bogart, uh, who works for the post office. Uh, she is Paula's second in command and she is right at the heart of the story. It was a real privilege to be part of the show. A, a highlight for me was um, sitting in the green room just off set with uh, fellow actors who I've admired for years, um, listening to Toby and Alex and Monica talking about their uh, life and stories and 
careers was it was a real real highlight of my career in general actually this is about the reputation of the post office it's not it's about people's lives you moron finally 555 of us now ready to tell our stories the challenge of a role like this is to you are playing someone i am playing someone who not only exists who's an exceptional human being but one of the things that he is makes him exceptional and makes him very interesting to play is that he's extremely modest self-effacing and will not rise to provocation who is thorough meticulous dogged determined and honorable uh, so when i chatted to him i'm constantly looking as an actor you're constantly looking for but where's the Con, where's the, there's the other side of you. Where's the, where's the, where's the cost of all of this? My character goes through um, some, some quite deep suffering and a lot of distress. So I guess the most challenging thing was getting to the psychological point and emotional point to really uh, authentically portray that. Um, so it was a challenge, but it was great because um, it was just really satisfying to kind of get my teeth into. The part was written in transcript, i.e. I could only say what Paula Venels had said in transcripts, emails, phone calls, um, text exchanges, and I had to make that language fit into my mouth, and um, I've never had to do that before, uh, and that was, that, it was difficult to, to sound like, um, to be convincing. The first part of the filming for me um, was very much being on my own, uh, being on my own in the post office, being on my own on the helpline and experiencing everything in quite an isolated way and um, sort of recreating the problems that, that Joe had in, in quite an isolated way. So my, what I was really looking forward to and what was wonderful was the moment when I got together with the other sub postmasters. And it was a great moment when we came together, firstly, to form the group. And I remember this sort of trickle that turned into a stream of the post office, well, uh, the, the pub postmasters arriving from all over the country to this village hall that Alan had arranged. And that being very moving on the day as well, that you suddenly see all these actors who've been through similar scenes elsewhere, but in isolation. And then latterly also the scenes where we take on the, uh, the post office in, in court. There's a lot of moments in the drama that I'm, I'm proud of. And there's, there's a sort of, you know, you're like a kind of parent with your favourite children and some weeks it's that and some weeks it's this. I, I, I think, the, the, I remember the day I remember the most was when we reconstructed the, um, the, 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 the characters coming out after receiving their compens their kind of criminal convictions being overturned outside the real Royal, royal Courts of Justice. And we had a large crowd, lots of extras, and the, sp and the emotion that was running through that day um, with the real actors, with, the, with, with everybody, the crew, people were crying, people were kind of, you know, felt the, the enormity of what we were doing and the power of what we were doing and that hopefully that will be, you know, in some way captured and conveyed to the audience. What we really want to achieve with this show is just to, to make sure that more people know what went on. It's really extraordinary how even after 20 years so many people I meet have never heard of this story. I think the story needs to be seen in its entirety. It's You can't really pick out a highlight, certainly not a highlights reel. Um, the enormity of the tale, how long it lasted for and what these people have been through is, is something that uh, I'm keen for the nation to witness. I think it's a universal story, you know, I think it's everywhere. The idea that corporations and big business can shaft the people who work for them. Um, but the invigorating message to take from that is that, um, from this particular story, is that uh, there's a fight back.